In this video, an introduction into constitutive modeling with elastic plastic models will be provided. The goal of this video is to provide a background to analysts in FLAC so that the use of various constitutive models available in the software will be better understood. To begin, let us revisit the FLAC calculation cycle that was presented in part two of the numerical modeling presentation video. Recall that the FLAC calculation is separated into four steps and occur at every time step in the analysis. Beginning at the box at the middle left is the calculation of the strain rates from velocities. Here, the finite volume method is used. Next is the constitutive law, which is used to calculate stresses from strain rates. This is a step in the calculation cycle where the various constitutive models are used. For example, the Morkula model and the PM4 SAN model. Next, using the updated internal stresses and external forces, the resultant nodal forces are calculated. With these resulting nodal forces calculated, new nodal velocities are calculated using the finite difference method of approximation of F equals MA. In this presentation, we'll be focusing on the constitutive law calculation. The parameters entering this calculation at a particular time step, represented by subscript I, is the stresses, strains, and strain rates at the zone. The goal of this calculation is to calculate the increment in stress for the next time step, I plus one. This calculation is accomplished by utilizing many mathematical relationships and laws that describe the change in stresses and elastic and plastic strains. The focus of this presentation is on introducing the mathematical relationships for the so-called elastic plastic models, or simply elastoplasticity. An elastic plastic model is defined based on essentially five items. First, elasticity. Second, the yield function. Third, the flow rule and or plastic potential. Fourth, the Harding law. And fifth, the consistency equation. To present these concepts, a simple block spring system will be used. As seen, the response of the block is described by a few key terms. In terms of displacement, the total displacement of the block delta is decomposed into the elastic displacement delta superscript E in the spring and the permanent displacement of the block, delta superscript P. The material response to the system is related to the spring stiffness K and the yield force Fy. This simple block example provides a direct analogy to an actual constitutive model in FLAC, for example, the more Coulomb model. In particular, the permanent plastic displacement of the block, delta P, is an analogy to the plastic strains. The bold font for epsilon highlights that this is a matrix type form with normal strains and shear strain. Next, the spring stiffness delta E is an analogy to the elastic strains epsilon E, and the total displacement delta is an analogy to the total strains epsilon. Also, the spring stiffness K is an analogy to the elastic coefficients. For example, the shear modulus G and bulk modulus K. Lastly, the yield force Fy is an analogy to the shear strength parameters of soil, for example, the cohesion and friction angle. Using this block example, we will now discuss in greater detail each of the five items of an elastic plastic model. First, elasticity. Elasticity refers to the response of the spring. A critical item to note here is that the change in the forces, an analogy for the change in the stresses, relate directly to a change in elastic displacement. For example, for this block, the time derivative of force is equal to the stiffness of the spring times the time derivative of elastic displacement. Second, the yield function. The yield function describes in mathematical form the condition in which yielding will occur. In this block example, we expect that yielding will occur with permanent unrecoverable movement when the force to the block just barely exceeds the yield force, Fy. This is mathematically written as follows, where the lowercase letter f is the yield function and is equal to the applied force on the block from the spring, f, minus the yield force, fy. This result must always be less than or equal to zero. That is, when f is less than fy, f is less than zero. This is the condition representative of no permanent plastic block displacement. Only elastic displacement occurs. If on the other hand, F is equal to Fy, F is zero, and now permanent plastic displacement will occur. 
In the third item, we desire to determine for the yielding block the direction of plastic displacement, an analogy for plastic strains. With this in mind, we discuss two key concepts, the flow rule and the plastic potential, G. In essence, the goal here is to determine and mathematically define the direction of plastic flow. For this block, the answer is trivial. Permanent plastic displacement is parallel to the direction of loading. This direction will be defined here as S, shear direction. To better highlight this direction, the subscript S has been added as a subscript to the elastic, plastic, and total displacements. What about if other directions of block displacement are considered? Here the green arrow represents the direction of plastic flow. In the current case, the direction of plastic flow is in the horizontal direction. In this new case, the block is moving at an angle from the horizontal, if yielded, and the direction of plastic flow has changed. Now the direction of plastic flow is not only in the S direction, but there is also a component of plastic flow in the normal N direction. We now see that there are potentially two components of plastic flow here, one in the normal direction and the other in the shear direction. By considering other geometries, we will see that additional directions of plastic flow are also possible. What we have just observed in terms of plastic flow can be described mathematically by first creating a plot where the horizontal axis represents the plastic displacement in the shear direction and the vertical axis represents the plastic displacement in the normal direction. With these axes set, we may now add on this plot the green vectors associated with the five blocks to the right. And we may now add a function that is a curve perpendicular to all five vectors. This line is shown in red and is termed the plastic potential G. In defining this curve, the flow rule is used to state that the plastic flow delta P is perpendicular to the plastic potential G. The fourth item in elastoplasticity is the hardening law. In this example, the hardening law describes how the yield force Fy changes. For example, the yield force could be defined to change with, say, the plastic displacement. The fifth item is the consistency equation. Essentially, the consistency equation brings together items one through four by requiring that the change in size and yield function and the amount of plastic strain must be consistent. It is through the use of the consistency equation that the magnitude of plastic displacement and analogy for plastic strains are determined. These five items together describe the key components of an elastic plastic model. When reviewing constitutive model documentation, these items should be identified and understood. This completes a brief introduction into constitutive modeling.